In this video, we're gonna show you how we find deals that other investors miss, like this deal. The problem is 90% of investors don't stay up to date with rules, regulations, new planning changes, and end up missing deals that are on the open market. If you plan ahead for what's coming into place, you will see a lot more deals on the market. For you to understand, let me give you this case study of a former bank, which we converted to commercial or residential and doubled the value of the building. Now we're gonna be running through a lot of information, so make sure you take some notes and comment after the video. Now the deal in question is a former nationwide bank based in Burnham, Buckinghamshire, which is just a stone's throw from the outer suburbs of London. Now, when we looked at this site, it was based over three floors, right on the high street and primed for conversion to commercial and residential. It had a shop front on the high street and for us, it's always important to retain an element of commercial if it's on the high street because realistically, no one wants a converted shop with your bedroom facing a high street. Now, when we looked at this site, we put our bids in, we we're only up against one other buyer and that buyer stopped at 300,000 on this site. But we saw something that they didn't. We saw we could convert this into four income producing assets. So when I saw the other buyer walking around the site, I heard them speaking to their business partner and said, well, I think we should retain the commercial element on the ground floor and create one flat over two floors on the first and second floor. Now, the reason they wanted to maintain the commercial unit on the ground floor was at the time, planning actually stipulated you couldn't convert the ground floor to residential use because it was in a conservation area. And they just thought the second floor was too small to convert to a self-contained flat, hence they wanted to combine the first and second floors in. Now, when I looked at this site, I saw four income producing assets. The first one being the retail unit. I knew if we reduce the retail unit down to sort of 25, 30 square meters, it'll be ideal for a barber shop, nail salon, mobile phone shop, or like a mini office. As we were looking at this property in early 2021, we knew that minimum space standards were coming in 1st of April, 2021. So we knew if we can get our offer accepted with the second floor, which was around 30 square meters, which is seven and a half square meters below what the minimum space standards were gonna be on the 1st of April, 2021. We knew we could get planning to actually convert this into a decent studio flat. Now at 30 square meters, the flat would actually still be of a decent size. We would work with some designers to ensure the flat has functionality as well as design and fits the purpose of being a studio flat. So the first thing we did, once we got our offer accepted, we actually put in a planning application to convert the second floor to a studio flat and at the same time put in an application to convert the first floor to a two bedroom self-contained flat. Now we knew this was gonna be risky because we haven't actually exchanged on the property but we knew as it was a bank that was actually being sold by Nationwide themselves, the chances of them worrying about planning gain was actually quite minimum. So therefore we went full steam ahead on this angle. Now let me come back to the ground floor. I mentioned it was in a conservation area and at that time, you couldn't convert this to residential use, but we knew something that the other potential buyer didn't. Now, we knew there were some planning changes that were gonna come in, allowing you to convert more commercial properties into residential use, and this would actually include conservation areas as well. So the idea was we'll purchase this property, start work, and then on the 1st of September, 2021, we'll put in an application to change the rear of this bank to a one bedroom self-contained flat. Now this will actually give us one retail unit, one studio flat, one one bedroom flat, and one two bedroom flat. Now let's run through the numbers. We actually secured this site at 305,000 pounds. As all the works were gonna be internal and there was no structural changes, no major walls that we needed to sort of take out, and it was a simple case of partition walls, electric, wiring, plumbing. The build cost for those three self-contained units was gonna be 120,000. And before we even purchased the property, we had these plans, we gave them to our broker, we got a valuation done on what the current value was gonna be, which came in at 305,000. And as a four asset scheme combined of mixed use, commercial, residential, we got an end value of 750 before we even started work. So we knew this was gonna be an all money out deal. Now, what I'm actually trying to explain here is understanding the rules, planning changes, dates when 
rules come in, dates when planning is actually withdrawn on certain aspects is so crucial to being a successful property developer. Now over 23 years, the reason me and Sanjay have been very successful in implementing changes and building our portfolio is we've actually been studying while others have been out maybe partying we've ensured that we've stayed on top of any new changes that are coming out and these changes are actually very easy to find out because all you need to do is follow the property news that's out there if the government releases some white papers on what potential changes will be coming out you know we read these so once it's announced that these changes are in place we're ready to actually purchase now let me give you two examples one hmo council tax banding on rooms now when it was announced i saw so many people mention on their socials that this is now being abolished when they actually announced how they're going to remove this i didn't see anyone posting and this was evident from when we posted on our socials now the other example is homes to two dwelling conversions now a white paper has actually been released on this which details basically what the government have in mind. But most people have heard that this is coming out, but they don't actually understand what it's actually gonna entail. If this video has actually left you with a few questions, I want you to do two things. One, drop your question in the comments below. Two, sign up for our free webinar where we discuss commercial to residential. The details are in our description, where we do an A to Z on how to invest in commercial or residential properties. If you found this video useful, hit that like button, hit the bell icon, subscribe, because we're gonna be dropping a lot more useful content over the coming weeks and months.